my daughter is 12 years old and uh, had COVID back in December 2021. Um, can she have a vaccine now? And also she has beta thalassemia trait. Yeah, so um, she should wait 12 weeks, uh, ideally. We think um, looking at the immune responses, we've seen that if you have your vaccine 12 weeks or 90 days later, that's when you get the best immune response. So your immune system is very complicated. It initially sends lots of cells to fight an infection, and then they all talk to each other to make a more long lasting immune response. And that takes about 12 weeks. And we know that if you re-expose the immune system at that time, that's when you get the best kind of protective immunity. So we've, um, the one thing the UK, one of the things the UK got really right was having a gap of three months between the two doses of the vaccines in our vaccine protectiveness is better than in other places like Israel and America and Canada, where they did a shorter vaccine uh, gap between their two doses of the vaccine. And the other thing that's interesting is I talk about the data for myocarditis. All of the US vaccine doses were given four weeks apart. And when we've looked um, at the risk when you give a longer vaccine dose, 12 weeks, it actually decreases the risk of myocarditis as well. So waiting 12 weeks is the, the best time for the best kind of immune response and hopefully also to prevent any potential very rare complications. The first question is, is there a clinical guidance on whether 16 year olds need to have two vaccines um, plus clinical guidance on how long they should be between each, i.e. eight weeks. Um, and the second is, um, my son is 14 and has had the first vaccine, but before having the second, he got COVID for the second time. Does he then need to wait for 28 days from testing positive to have his second dose? So if you're able to, Dr. Whitaker, answer those uh, questions, I'd be grateful. Thanks, Michael. Um, so the Actually, for, so the, for the 14 year old, um, hopefully he had a mild infection with his infection. What we would recommend is he actually waits 12 weeks after that infection before having the second dose, not 28 days. Um, and that is partly uh, because we think the immune response to the second dose will be better at 12 weeks and partly uh, because we think then any potential very low risk of a complication would be lower. So those are the two reasons to wait 12 weeks. Um, do they need two doses? So there is um, a lot of evidence, in particular with the Omicron variant, to show that there is much better protection against the complications with two doses than with one. Um, and so that is the current recommendation is that they should all get two doses of the vaccine um, at the moment. The question is, from what date do we count um, to decide the approximate date for vaccine after being infected by COVID? So I don't know if you're able to just answer yeah. that. So either the first day of your, uh, so you had a lateral flow that was the first positive test or your PCR test that was positive, or if you didn't have a test, I guess, from the first day of symptoms, um, so about 12 weeks. It is, I mean, it's, it's approximate, so I wouldn't be counting down and saying it has to be exactly that amount of time, but it's, it's roughly three months is, is the guideline. Why is there a different vaccine for different age groups and why is Pfizer um, the vaccine that's given to children? If we're honest, uh, we were doing clinical trials on the AstraZeneca vaccine in children when we when it became apparent that a very, very tiny number of adults develop a vaccine induced clot. Um, it's extremely rare and actually um, now that it's known about when it does present, um, it's picked up quite quickly and is easily managed. But because the benefit of the vaccine overall was thought to be quite low in that age group, the vaccine trials were halted. And so we haven't been, we haven't finished the trials of AstraZeneca in children and young people, so that therefore we don't offer it to them. And then the two other vaccines which are mostly available are Pfizer and Moderna. Um, and the reason we've chosen Pfizer is that Moderna, which is also one of those mRNA vaccines and very effective, is a little bit more what we call reactogenic. So you're more likely to have a side effect with it because it really gets your immune system going, which is good from a protective perspective, but more side effects. And so possibly a slightly higher risk of myocarditis. And so the choice that the government and the JCVI made was that the Pfizer vaccine was the one with the best safety profile and the most data in children and young people. And that's why it's the one we've chosen. At some stage, do you expect the 12 to 15 years to be offered the booster? And secondly, I've noticed that the number of people receiving the booster is low um, next to the, compared to the first two doses. And does that concern you? So Dr. Whitaker, please. 
Thanks, Michael. I think the booster question is really interesting. And if I'm honest, I think it's something we're still trying to work out um, that I don't know of anywhere that's offering booster doses to young people of this age group yet, because there are ongoing clinical trials to try and understand um, the sequence in which you would give the vaccines, the the the, the optimum time between the doses, um, and to also look at a bit of safety data. So I know that there are vaccine trials ongoing to explore that question. Um, and I think when it comes to the booster, um, we need to work out um, how much additional benefit it gives in the protection from hospitalisation and severe disease, which is already a relatively low risk in children. So at the moment, um, I don't believe there is any plan to give a booster dose to healthy adolescents. I think to adolescents and then potentially five to 11 year olds who have immunocompromised or not able to mount a proper immune response to the vaccine, they may well be offered a third dose, but that is just a single course. It's not a booster. It's just to make sure they get a good immune response. So you may hear of some young people who have complicated health conditions doing that, but I think that um, we need to gather more information about the need and the safety and the best way to deliver ongoing vaccine doses to our young people. But I suspect that over time it'll become like the flu vaccine where it would be given on an annual basis going into the winter. We would think that as this pandemic settles down, we'll start seeing COVID in the winter like we see flu in the winter at the moment. Um, and once we're confident about the best way to, to deal with that, that is when booster doses would become a thing for children and young people when we have the right information. My daughter is 13 and due to have a first vaccination this Saturday, um, she had a high fever since Sunday for two days, sore throat and congestion. She's tested negative for COVID. Should her vaccination be delayed while she was recovering from a virus? So Dr McLaughlin, if I could come to you for that question, please. Yes, definitely. As you can imagine, we are asked this an awful lot because um, it feels why while the news is absolutely obsessed with COVID, we also have to remember that there are many other viruses and illnesses that are affecting our population at the moment, as they would in any winter period. So importantly, if someone is symptomatic, the most useful test to do is a PCR to actually determine if COVID is there or not, uh, rather than a lateral flow test. So um, just to clarify that, that that would be the most useful test to do. And obviously, because we want to be very confident that this is not COVID, because we if it is COVID, as we've mentioned before, we'd recommend waiting those 12 weeks prior to giving um, any further vaccination. However, if it is not COVID and is one of the many, many other viruses that are circulating at the moment, as long as she is well, it is absolutely fine to have that um, vaccination um, within uh, on Sunday, as you mentioned. But obviously, if there's um, any concerns or she's feeling a bit under the weather, as the um, vaccination itself can stimulate that immune response and bring in um, you know, some areas of sensitivity at the site of the vaccine, leave you feeling a little bit um, run down. If you would rather wait for um, a little while and delay it, that is fine. Clinically, though, we would absolutely uh, say that it is safe to have it. Um, but it is just up to the individual about how they're feeling a little bit closer to the time.